Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a very good evening already. We'll have an even better one by listening to our special guest for this night, coming straight from Madrid, straight. Almudena Grandes. <clears throat> You had a good time already here from five o'clock this morning? No, five o'clock? No, not this morning. Five o'clock this evening? This evening. Oh, so okay. you're only a few hours here. <laughs> yeah. And, and the Im first impression of the first hours here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to Netherlands last time in April. So I have it's much very changed recent, since April. Yes, no, I have not mm, noticed uh, most changes. Even if in <laughs> April I went to Amsterdam and Utrecht, Utrecht, yeah. and now I oh, but that's impossible today. It's my so, first. It's yes, in my, in, it's my first time in the Hague, so <laughs> it's very difficult. The, the Dutch name is for me. No. Uh, to say it, but yes. I can, your, your Dutch is better than my oh, Spanish. Oh, wonderful! Yes. Oh, yes, sure. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure of that. <laughs> um, this is what it's all about. Het ijzig hart, the frozen heart. El corazón helado. helado. Muy bien, muy bien. Ah, daar gaan we dus al. Um, it's your magnum opus, I think. Well, yes, it's the most ambitious, I mean, I think the, the bigger, even physically, and the most, mm. the most ambitious book I have written, because not only for the size, mm. it's very easy to, to... The weight, the weight. But for the subject, because mm. I, um, this is a, a novel about uh, the memory, the individual and collective memory of Spanish people about the mm, uh, contemporary history and especially of the tragedy that represented the Spanish Civil War. Uh, but it's not another novel about uh, the Civil War, but I tried to give the version of the grandsons. So it's the book of a grandson and the book of a granddaughter about the memory of Spain. And that means that it's a book about the main subject of my generation. I think that in each country, each generation has a subject to resolve. I mean, a problem, a collective problem, a theme that it's over um, their shoulders. And this is the big uh, unsolved problem of my generation of the Spanish people, so um, I have never written a book that have um, affected, affect, no, that have um, uh, hit me so much and uh, as this book. It was uh, published in Spain in 2007 Seven, yes. and afterwards in various uh, countries, other countries yes. and languages and you won prizes all over uh, yes. in Europe, you could say. <laughs> oh, no, not all over. <laughs> <laughs> I won prizes in Spain, two or three or four. I won another prize in France, another in Italy, and so on. So, that's uh, enough. Uh, <laughs> pre Méditerranée, ah, oui. France, uh, Premio de Novela Fondación José Manuel, Manuel Lara, Lara. Sí. and uh, Il Premio Rapallo Carige Internazionale in Italy. In Italy. Mm -hmm. So we have here a very uh, Spanish subject, yes. the 20th century of your country, yeah. with a very special history, uh, the Civil War in the 30s, afterwards the Second World War, and afterwards the Franco regime. That's very particular uh, and, and special for Spain. Do you do you know, do you have an explanation why it's so broadly uh, yes. recognized as a, as a masterpiece? I really thought that, I, I, well, it's a very Spanish novel in the sense that uh, the subject doesn't belong to me. The subject belongs to almost each Spanish people. So mm. when I re wrote the book, 
I had um, always the idea that uh, the novel was mine, but the subject not, not the theme, not the argument of the book. It was not mine. But you know that the Spanish Civil War is a very uh, representative conflict of the the Europe life in the middle of the of the 20th century. Really, the Spanish Civil War was the first battle of the Second World War. He has not been recognized because, uh, well, mm, the winner in Spain was the was was the friend of the losers in the rest of Europe, and uh, my country has had a very peculiar way. We have always gone in the in the opposite way, in the opposite direction than the rest of of Europe. But uh, even if it is like that, this story speaks about the freedom and the fascism and the way in which the fascists try to um, cut uh, the 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 freedom and the me and the memory of freedom in a whole country tells a story about grandsons that couldn't believe uh, that the life of their grandparents was the real life and i think that in general um, even if i didn't expect this even if i really thought like you when i finished the book that it was a true spanish novel to be Re, uh, to be read by people from other nationalities, but finally, I think that um, the the story of this novel it's um, quite a quite European story. I mean, um, the relationships between grandsons and grandparents, mm -hmm. the the feeling of that we are not so uh, we are not in Spain at least we are not so good as them so we it's i think it's a, a novel that has been read with um, the sense of read of read something familiar from french and italian and dutch and german readers and because perhaps because it's a, it's a love story it's a love it's story a, too yes too and it's a, it, it 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 isn't just only uh, no, no, this, this yes. It's not so, only Spanish, it's also universal. <laughs> yes, the, I think um, the past of, in this book is very important, but this is not a book about the past. This is a book about the present. And this is not a book about history. This is a book about memory. Memory is the thing that begins when history finished. When one, the history finished began the memory of this history. And is a love story between uh, the between a Spanish man, 40 years old, Alvaro, that, Alvaro Carrion, that is professor of physics in a university of Madrid, that he feels himself very comfortable with his, with his life. He has not the life a wonderful life. He has not a, a exciting, amazing, uh, the best life, but he's quite uh, satisfied with his job, his, ma with his wi wife, mm -hmm. um, his, and the, the life of this man changes radically, uh, fell down absolutely when his father died. And he realized that his father was not the man he, built, he thought he was. And he realized that because he felt... Uh, terribly in love with a woman, a very mysterious woman that he has found in the burial of his father. It's a very strange situation because his father uh, was dead and in the cemetery appears a woman that nobody knows who is. So he began to be a little obsessed with this woman, finally met these women in a very strange circumstances. He thinks that uh, everything is for Assad and it's not so Assad. There is an old story um, behind this relationship. And finally, uh, the, the novel becomes a huge love story because 
huge because it's uh, a desperate love story, a love story that uh, in which the two lovers are doing much more things than love, mm -hmm. because because they they are involved many many things um, apart from the love. No, the the a very all the story of families of traditions of pain that is um, en juego. I don't know that is in middle of the of the love story, but of course it's a love story. And it's also possible to to uh, read this as as a symbolic uh, love story that their protagonists coming from two different families yes. are together yes the, uh, well yes it's like that is the uh, alvaro and raquel in a certain sense are the symbol of a country that has reconciliated itself finally mm. after many many years because during many years, during 40 years, it was almost impossible that one man or woman of the family of a winner could marry one man or woman of the family of a loser. And they met themselves in a country in which the memory of this, um, um, this forbidden love uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't exist. No, in mm -hmm. that sense, they are a symbol of a country that um, supera, superado, that has left. Uh, uh, bueno, eso. <laughs> has uh, okay. for forgotten this kind of, of problems. Yeah? And, um, um, I am more clever in Spanish, but <laughs> as, you, as you don't speak Spanish, it's not my fault. <laughs> Sorry. And, and how do you explain that uh, you, you said that uh, parents and grandparents and uh, families didn't speak about the past because it was too uh, too much sorrow, yes. or too complicated. Yes, the, the they, 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 they would like to arrest it. Hmm. So here we have uh, uh, two people born in the 60s, hmm. so they are not um, themselves guilty, can be guilty of anything in the past, and they can speak about it and, and dig in, in, in the past, but how do you explain that uh, it's in the recent years in, in Spain that there are documentaries, mm. biographies, books, mm -hmm. and, but in 75 it was that... Uh, yeah, Frank Franco died, yes. So it's 30 years of I will explain silence to you. still. Yes. Yeah, you know, in this novel, um, I think that it's quite well reflect to, in Spain, there is a very particular generational dynamic about the subject of memory, because it has been three generations that has that have had very different behavior in front of in respect to this theme. Um, the grandparents, so my grandparents, the generation of people that fought in the war, they didn't speak. The loser didn't speak, and it's quite uh, easy to understand, mm. because by what by one hand it's not easy to live remembering always a defeat, but uh, in the other hand, it's really it was really very very dangerous for a boy or for a girl to know who was his father, her mother, his his mother in the Spain of the 40s or and the 50s, because the repression was really uh, very, very uh, terrific. Not just the physical repression, I mean, the, the people that die and that lose all uh, her, their properties, the people that stayed in prison 20 years, 30 years, but also the civil repression. I mean, the boys and girls that didn't were admitted in the schools, that um, didn't come, didn't play with another girls and boys. It was very difficult. So losers didn't speak. It's very uh, funny, or not funny, but it's very curious, uh, strange, mm -hmm. to see that many, many winners didn't speak neither them mm. speak. I think that because mm, not many people 
supported the coup d'etat in the 36 with the idea that for Spain was good a bit of order. So they they were um, they they wanted a little a, a little order more, but they didn't want a dictator a dictatorship of forty years of uh, life. So many people that supported the coup d'état in the thirty six um, didn't want didn't were very proud of themselves. So these people didn't speak. So the second generation, the generation of my parents, they grew up. Under the silence, mm -hmm. under the silence, mm -hmm. uh, they were told not to make, uh, not to put questions, not to, um, not to put questions. Don't, don't look. Don't. So it was not uh, even a normal silence, a sincere silence. It was not. Don't speak about war. No, it was a euphemistic silence. Mm -hmm. Let's forget, let's forget the ugly things, let's forget the sad things. Uh, so this generation, this, the generation of my parents, that are the parents of Alvaro and the parents of Raquel, were the, was the generation that made the transition in uh, 75. When Franco died, they came, they take, they drive the country from the dictatorship to the democracy, mm -hmm. but they drive Spain to the democracy in the only way he knew they knew how to do the things so in silence not putting question not um, thinking and the thing no just well we are going to do uh, a line in the floor and we are here but now we are there so we were addicted we were addicted to ship but now we are a democracy everybody's happy now uh, La Movida and so on. So that was the <coughs> the process. And after it, it came, it came another generation. That is mm -hmm. my generation, the generation of the grandsons. We have been the first generation of Spanish people in many many years that have had not fear. We have had not fear, and we have had not complexes of the inferiority complex, the, the, the traditional inferiority complex of the people that grew um, under the, 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 the dictatorship and didn't want, they didn't travel and didn't know everything, they didn't know anything about the world. We are the first ones, and when we became people of 40 years old, that I think that is the age of, um, Ask yourself, where, where are you? In which country do you live? Uh, what can you expect uh, of the future? Mm -hmm. In that moment, we have put, in, we have put questions in for the first time, and we have not got answers. So, Alvaro and Raquel are representatives of this generation that have put questions and have not get answers and have begun to think that everything was going uh, very badly in Spain, even if, even if everything is okay and we are this funny country and so on. And, and, who, uh, and, and what's the, the response? You, you just, we, we've all uh, said that it's a big success and not only in Spain, but, but what's the uh, response in Spain for doing this because uh, it's possible that you uh, speaking about the past and, and telling what, what what has happened then uh, that wasn't uh, usual. Uh, it's it's possible that you lay bare uh, wounds that were hidden before. Well, yes. Uh, well. I have had reaction, reactions of mm, many different uh, uh, kind. kind, yes. But in general, mm, it was a very difficult book to be written for me. I think it's the most difficult book I have written. And it's the book that has given me more. Give me more. More uh, happiness, more... Mm -hmm. Um, joy. There is many people that uh, have told me, "You have told my life," and I didn't knew these people, and I didn't knew their families, and I, 
And for me, it has been really emotion, emo, em, uh, yeah, really move, move, moving. And mm-hmm. uh, well, there is some people too that thinks that there is no use to write this kind of books. There are people that say that um, it's better not to write books like that, and it's better not to uh, remember. In in high boys and mm-hmm. that is better to stay to let the things stay um, always. But I think that the bounds the the oh yeah, see, bounds the wounds, w- wounds yes. um, that have been but uh, that have been that ha- that are not clean are not uh, closed even if they seems to be closed. So, and in that sense, I think it's better to open the wounds and to clean it, and after the wounds can be closed forever. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and after this one, this this most ambitious book you said, and um, you've planned a series of <laughs> six, a series of six novels. No, not not one. No, not one. Yes, six but, well, books. This is the this is my novel about the civil war. Mm-hmm. So I have. Finished with the civil war. So but, we are in 39. Yeah, no. I am in 39. <laughs> so in 39. But when I was um, writing this book, writing this book, I um, I began to read lots and lots and lots of other books about the story of Spain in the 20th century. Because when I thought on um, write uh, the Frozen Heart, I first thought as every each Spanish people that I knew lots of things about the war and I didn't need to read more because I knew everything and I began to read something too and I discovered something very important that was I didn't knew anything anything well more or less <laughs> I think I I didn't knew anything so I began to read and read and read not to document the book, but not to um, to find the stories or not, just to know, just to know and just to understand, because it was a conflict very difficult to understand, very, very difficult, very complex with many, many people and many, many political parties, many, many mm-hmm. factors, many, many um, uh, foreigners' interests. Uh, Working in Spain in that in that moment, so um, and I discovered one thing that I didn't expect that in the over the, the behind the official history mm-hmm. behind the official history for uh, for a writer that want to uh, see over the the official history. It was a wall, and an, an epic, a whole epic of characters and stories and adventures and really, really um, irresistible. I don't know how to say it in English. Really irresistible. It could be for it's, a writer. It's the same. It's the same. Yes, <laughs> it's, the same. it's the same for a writer. So yes. I discovered many. Th- Stories that I would like very much to tell um, of the post-war, but I couldn't uh, tell. I couldn't tell these stories in the book, in this book, because they have chosen to um, exile the Fernandez family. So I have to. I have decided to tell this, the exile. I couldn't tell the post-war from the 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 inner cities of Spain. So finally, I decided to write a series in the way of Benito Perez Galdós, that is a writer of the 19th century, a Spanish writer that I like very much. That um, well, he wrote lots of novels um, about the. Um, most important battles and the most important moments of the spe- of the story of Spain in the 19th century, mm-hmm. and I'm going to uh, uh, invent fictions to put themselves in the 
um, in a in a historical moment, um, and well, the 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 main characters of the history of the Spanish history is, are going to work with my fiction uh, characters in the novel. Of course, that is also important yes, for you yes, here. And in, yes. at the end of the novel, you you argue uh, you to the reader uh, directly. You you say then. Although this is fiction, you must know that everything has it's happened. true, yes, you, has happened, You yes. want to uh, yes. emphasize on that, that it's in not, uh, but it's for you important to uh, not only uh, uh, lend or bend on, uh, on historical facts, but also uh, that you make fiction of it, that it's, that's, yes. a, that's a story, uh, not only a love story between uh, characters, but also an, an, an ode to Madrid and mm. uh, the... the the mixture of uh, uh, families and uh, the way they behave and talk and uh, uh, are dressed and that's also for you uh, 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 very important I guess that it's not only no, documentary yes, of history. Course. I am a writer so my main uh, compromise is with the literature and my work is to write novels and uh, I have to write always well no good novels that's my job and that's my nature I mean and and but I think yes I am um, even now when I write fictions that have an historical origin mm -hmm. I think that with fiction with the fiction you can go everywhere so fiction is uh, a wonderful way to um, understand the world. So it's not uh, war. It's also for you that uh, that you understand history better. Uh, of course, of course. Well, n not just, but not only better. You know, fiction, um, literature has, for me, I think, has to to do with the emotion. The land of literature is the emotion and the the material, no, of the relationships between an author and a reader are the emotions, and in that in that sense, a fiction, a novel, can uh, give to a reader a most um, powerful comprehension of the of the reality than a non-fiction book because. Uh, a novel, a good novel always called you by your name. A good novel always says to you, here is your life. Even if you don't think so, even if you are from other age, even if you are... No, a good novel always tells you uh, about your life. And in that sense, a uh, novel can uh, explain better the reality to a reader than a non-fiction book. You will give us an, a, a, a short demonstration. Yes, I'm going to read you in Spanish. Chosen in, in Spanish. But so I think it's like yes, yes, in, the, in the translation opera. Translation will appear here, so you don't have to worry. Mm. We don't I feel know myself, what you're talking about. <laughs> I call myself a prima donna. <laughs> well, I'm going to read. Okay. Este país, como todos ustedes saben, sin duda tuvo una vez una oportunidad. Así comenzó la primera clase que José Ignacio Cardona me dio en mi vida. La tuvo y se la robaron. Entonces no se exiliaron solo los poetas, no crean. Se exiliaron también los científicos, los físicos, los químicos, los biólogos, los médicos, los matemáticos. ¿Y qué? Ha pasado mucho tiempo, me dirán, y tendrán razón, pero todos llevamos aún el polvo de la dictadura en los zapatos. Ustedes también, aunque no lo sepan. Más tiempo hace falta para que florezcan los desiertos y, por desgracia para todos, la ciencia no se recupera tan deprisa como la literatura. Por eso prefiero que sepan esto ahora, para que luego no me digan que no les advertí lo difícil que es ser físico en España. Ténganlo en cuenta por si quieren cambiarse de carrera, porque todavía estará a tiempo. Cuando terminó su discurso se nos quedó mirando, frunció el ceño, se dio la vuelta... Cogió una tiza y empezó a explicarnos su programa desde la pizarra. No hubo ninguna deserción, ninguna pregunta, aunque algunos se rieron un poco sin hacer ruido 
de aquel profesor tan joven que parecía al mismo tiempo tan antiguo, tan desafinado, tan indigno de la alegría de quienes debían de ser los suyos, esa euforia que reventaba en el aire en las vísperas del retorno de la izquierda al poder. Pero José Ignacio Carmona tenía razón y no tardamos mucho tiempo en descubrirlo, en asomarnos a una grieta profunda de bordes sucios, mal aserrados, por lo que una vez se había precipitado en el vacío cualquier tradición, todo progreso. Sigue soltándoles el mismo discurso a los de primero, le habría preguntado yo al comienzo de aquel mismo curso. No, me he vuelto un poco más optimista, me contestó. Pero le sigo hablando de la oportunidad y de los desiertos, eso sí. Lo que tiene gracia es que ahora al final los alumnos me aplauden y sonrió, fíjate, qué curioso. Eso está bien, apunté. Quiere decir que son más listos que nosotros. No, no son más listos, él volvió, él volvió a sonreír. Lo que pasa es que están más lejos. La óptica es una ciencia paradójica, ya sabes. Las paradojas de la óptica enfocaron también mis ojos hacia un punto situado mucho más allá de los bordes de aquella carpeta azul, un horizonte que no había contemplado nunca con la nitidez, la claridad que ahora desprendía. Este país tuvo una vez una oportunidad, recordé. Fue una vez el país de los hombres, de las mujeres admirables, pero ellos no guardan en una carpeta ningún testimonio que justifique su condición. Ellos quemaron los papeles, los tiraron, los rompieron, se los comieron. Para ellos eran peligrosos, para mi padre no. Porque frente a los hombres, a las mujeres admirables, en este país solo hay hombres y mujeres a los que debemos comprender. Gente pequeña, de un país pequeño y pobre y atrasado, que hizo lo que pudo para sobrevivir, para llegar a vivir algún día en un país grande y rico y desarrollado y satisfecho de sí mismo, donde todo lo que pasa sucede siempre como por arte de magia. Las manos son más rápidas que la vista, decía mi padre, y él lo sabía, él lo vivió. Y aquí un buen día hubo una guerra, y aquí un buen día se terminó, y aquí un buen día, muy despacio, con mucho trabajo, mucho esfuerzo de unos pocos, empezó a brotar la hierba en una esquina del desierto, y fue mérito de todos. Y cómo no comprender, cómo no conceder el beneficio de la comprensión a tanta gente pequeña empeñada en sobrevivir en un país pequeño. Mi padre contó siempre con esa ventaja, la engravidez de España, la excepción a la ley de la causa y el efecto, el país donde nadie ve nunca una manzana que se cae del árbol, porque todas las manzanas están ya en el suelo desde el principio y eso es lo más práctico, lo más sabio, lo más cómodo. Por eso, porque no eran peligrosos para él, mi padre no se había tomado la molestia de destruir aquellos papeles, por eso no los había seleccionado y ni siquiera los había escondido bien. Pero la óptica es una ciencia paradójica y la magia un arte inconsistente, puro truco, un artificio que se desmorona antes o después bajo la inexorable presión de las leyes físicas. Las lentes se fijan, se disimulan, se ensucian, parecen cubrirse con el polvo del olvido y las ramas del manzano están desnudas, los frutos en el suelo, dispuestos con cuidado, una astucia ventajosa y mezquina que complace al escenógrafo, acostumbrado a trabajar sin testigos. Pero aunque los desiertos florezcan muy despacio, la hierba brota antes en el suelo que en la mirada de quienes lo contemplan. Y por eso tiene que pasar el tiempo, mucho tiempo, para que alguien recuerde un buen día que las manzanas no crecen en la tierra, que las manzanas se caen necesariamente de los árboles y los niños de primero aplauden a José Ignacio Carmona. Entonces cerré la carpeta. La dejé a un lado y sentí un brote de frío repentino, una náusea moral, la tentación de abandonar. Había previsto acercarme a la facultad después de rastrear las huellas de Raquel Fernández Perea en el mínimo archivo secreto de su amante, pero lo que había encontrado en la carpeta azul no me dejó muchas ganas de seguir. De pronto necesitaba respirar el aire de la calle, escapar de aquellos uniformes, de aquellas cartas, del juramento bilingüe y de mis propias conclusiones. Estuve a punto de obedecer aquel impulso, pero recordé a tiempo que no volvería a tener una mañana libre hasta el martes de la semana siguiente y la cerradura no aguantó ni dos martillazos. Thank you very much. Thank you to you for reading, for coming to Den Haag for the first time and I hope that's my first not time in Den Haag. No, no, first time in Den Haag. Den Haag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's going better 
every time you say it. So <laughs> next time you say the Haag, the Haag, it's a real Haagenees. Um, and for writing Het IJzer Hart, can you, t- can you speak this out, this title in Dutch? Ah, yes, yes. Uh, het? Het Ichzig Hart, no? Mm, no, yeah, it's, it, yes, almost, almost. You know the, the frozen heart? Ah, well, yes. I'm going to tell it very, 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 very fast. Mm-hmm. But the frozen heart is a verse. Well, El Corazón Helado is a, um, an interpretation of a verse of a Spanish poet, the most important contemporary Spanish poet called Antonio Machado, that wrote a very short poem many years before of the war. So it was like a prophecy that told little Spanish that are going to born uh, one of the two Spains are going to frozen your heart. So the frozen heart is like the explanation of the verse of Matel. So thank you very thank much you for you. the frozen heart. And uh, we're looking out for your next six novels. To come. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It has been very easy. Son of a gun, 